We have two bills to consider today. Um, the first bill is Senate Bill 252, uh, Teaching Fellows. And the second bill is the uh, nominations for State Board of Community Colleges. We have a PCS on the uh, for Senate Bill 252. Is there a motion we accept the PCS? Senator Waddell. Okay. Okay, I'll call on uh, Senator Barefoot to introduce the bill and welcome Lieutenant Governor also. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the committee. Before I explain the bill, I'd like to recognize some of our state's education leaders that have uh, joined us today. Lieutenant Governor Dan Forrest, uh, North Carolina State Superintendent of Public Instruction, Mark Johnson, who will be with us in just a few minutes. Uh, President of the North Carolina Independent Colleges and Universities, Dr. Hope Williams. Dean, Mar uh, Dean Marianne Danowitz of NC State. And Dr. Michael Marr of NC State College of Education. And one special person, my old friend, Wingett Smith from Thomasville, North Carolina, who is a uh, math special, special education teacher in Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools and a former teaching fellow. I would like to specifically acknowledge Dr. Marr and Dr. Hank, Dr. Marr of NC State, Dr. Hank Weddington of Lenore Ryan College for their constructive and insightful feedback that made this proposal a better bill. Some of the policy decisions we made were based on their evidence-based approaches to policy, which we have greatly appreciate. Our state and the state of public education was in bad shape coming out of the Great Recession. Salaries were frozen, teachers were furloughed, and programs were cut. But that is not where we are today. Since 2011, the House and Senate have worked together to bring back North Carolina's commitment to education by tackling important reforms that seek to improve student outcomes, raise teacher pay, reward our best teachers, and connect our classrooms digitally. Today, we are facing a new crisis, however, competition. Our schools are facing a great need for the best and brightest teachers in science, technology, engineering, and mathematic fields, as well as special needs. We know our educational leaders need tools to attract the best and brightest to our classrooms, and our students deserve it. The 2015-2016 North Carolina State of the Teaching Profession Report shows that since 2013, the top five most difficult to staff subject areas as reported by local school districts are math, science, and special education areas across different grade levels. In 2015, 90 school districts reported having difficulty staffing high school math teachers. At the end of last session, I chaired a Senate work group that was focused specifically on addressing teacher recruitment, retention, and education preparation challenges in the state of North Carolina. We put together a team which included Senator Tamara Berenger, <coughs> Senator Deanna Ballard, and Senator Jerry Tillman. We went on a listening tour to schools of education at Meredith and NC State and Shaw University. We met with interest groups and educational leaders from across the state to discuss and generate ideas on how the legislature can improve teacher recruitment, retention, and preparation in our state. During that process, our work group committed to working collaboratively with higher education K-12 leaders from across the state to deliver a top-notch program that was responsive to our state's needs. Through much collaboration, input, and feedback, we have arrived at that proposal that we stand strongly behind, and I would like to explain it to you. The North Carolina Teaching Fellows Program establishes a distinguished, forgivable loan program for teachers who demonstrate a desired commitment to serve in STEM or special education subject areas and agree to teach our North Carolina public schools. The purpose of the program is to recruit, prepare, and support students residing in or attending institutions of higher education located in North Carolina for preparation as highly effective STEM or special education teachers in the state's public schools. The bill establishes the North Carolina Teaching Fellows Commission through appointments by the UNC Board of Governors and the General Assembly. The commission will be comprised of academic deans, teachers, principals, a member from business and industry, and local school board members. Serving in ex officio capacities will be the North Carolina Teacher of the Year, Principal of the Year, Superintendent of the Year, Chair of the SEAA, and Director of the Teaching Fellows Program. The commission will determine both the student selection criteria and select the award recipients. The commission will also set stringent criteria and choose the five most effective teacher preparation programs in North Carolina to participate in the Teaching Fellows Program. 
The UNC Board of Governors will appoint a director to the program to be responsible for aggressive and strategic recruitment activities, including targeting regions of the state with the highest teacher attrition rates and recruitment challenges, actively engaging with educators, business leaders, community leaders throughout North Carolina, attracting candidates in STEM and special education to the program. The Superintendent of Public Instruction will be responsible for identifying and providing to the Commission a list of STEM and special education licensure areas that are seriously needed so that the Commission has up-to-date information on the state's greatest needs. The amount of the forgivable loan is up to $8,250. Any student coming out of high school or even transferring within colleges is, or who has completed a bachelor's degree is eligible. The loan forgiveness commitment is structured like this. Teachers have 10 years to pay back the loan. For every year a teacher was awarded a forgivable loan, they have to serve one year in a low performing school. Or, for every year a teacher was awarded a forgivable loan, they have to serve two years, or some combination of both. The SEAA will administer the loan portion of the program. And one major change in the PCS that is before you today is that the North Carolina Education Endowment Fund will be used to fund the program. This will generate approximately $6 million worth of funding for about 160 teachers per year. Now, some of you will remember the, uh, the genesis behind the NC Education Endowment Fund was an effort led by our Lieutenant Governor, and at this time I'd like to recognize him to come make some comments uh, before you today. Thanks, Senator Barefoot, uh, Mr. Chair, Senators, thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Um, I will be very, very brief here related to my comments related to this bill. I think uh, Senator Barefoot has outlined it very clear, clearly to you so far. Um, so today is April the 4th, and in just a few weeks, the government of North Carolina will understand uh, more clearly how much revenue has come into the state for, for this cycle. And uh, this is the very reason why we created the North Carolina Education Endowment Fund, because the budget process starts in the state every two years, and we get to the end of April, and then we find out how much money we actually have to do all the things that we've been dreaming about doing for a couple of years. And obviously, education is, has been at the top of that list. And when we created the endowment fund, the idea was to create a fund that would uh, level out the peaks and the valleys, if you will, of the uh, annual budget cycle. You know, if you have great plans for education and rewarding our best and our uh, brightest teachers and attracting and retaining them, you can have the best plans in the world, but if you don't have the revenue and the resources to do that uh, based on your uh, annual income, then those uh, ideas and those plans are going to be placed on the sidelines. And so we created the fund to say, you know what, we have a need, and we're going to need to have uh, some type of mechanism available to the state to be able to do things that are just outside of the norm of uh, regular teacher pay and regular teacher compensation. And so that fund was created and then that fund started to uh, get funded and now it's sitting there and it needs a purpose. And so uh, we have a purpose today with the Teaching Fellows Program to do exactly, exactly what that fund was established uh, to do, to attract and to retain the best and the brightest teachers that North Carolina can attract and retain through this forgivable loan program uh, and to bring them into the types of uh, teaching environments, teaching the types of subjects uh, that, they, that we need so desperately uh, in special education and those types of things. And that's what the, the fund was created for. So I'm actually very excited about it. We, we've been sitting there kind of waiting for uh, the opportunity for a program like this to come along uh, that, that, again, was outside of the spectrum of the, to be just the traditional or annual uh, peaks and valleys of what do we do this year about teacher compensation. Uh, so I think this is a good day for education in North Carolina. It's certainly a good day for uh, the kickoff of, uh, of a bill like this for the Teaching Fellows Program. And, I just really urge everybody's support of this and the support of the use of the um, Education Endowment Fund for that purpose. Thanks, Senator. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. With that, if, if uh, members of the committee wish, um, we have to have staff walk through the bill, but I've explained it pretty good. If you have any questions, I'll take those now. I think we are just going to do the session only today.
That's correct. Since this is a PCS, we're doing full discussion today, have a vote tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. I was looking. I was looking here at the amount of money, eight thousand two hundred uh, per year, and you would choose five institutions who would participate. I'm thinking about the, court, the amount of tuition for a year. So this is eight thousand two hundred fifty. What if it exceeds that? Um, Would the student be given more money as this the limit? That is that is how much the state offers in the forgivable loan for <coughs> tuition, fees, and books. Okay, so if it's more than that, when they go to the institution, then they will have to pay out of pocket for someplace else. Is that correct? Well, yeah, they'll have to make up the difference, but I would also argue that the reverse is true. There are many institutions, um, and I, I would say the majority of our public institutions are well below that price. Um, we have some institutions where it only costs $500 to attend. And so the way the bill reads is they can get up to 82 dollars Okay. I was just thinking about some institutions in Charlotte. Okay. The second, the second part of follow-up. Follow-up question. Okay. Follow-up uh, follow concerns. Um, I was looking at the regions that would be chosen and according to what this state is, it would be noticed that have recruitment. When you recruit teachers, you would be looking at the areas of the state. Is there any way that even though we, even though Charlotte is a, an urban area, it still has needs. <coughs> so how would you determine which of the areas would get needs to develop? Well, that, that's part of the reason why we are setting up a commission okay. uh, with an executive director who's going to lead those efforts and, um, and having the superintendent participate in that discussion with data that will, that will provide them with that. Um, and, and that's what they help determine. Okay. I was just looking at a line matching. I think that's what you mentioned about a because sometimes it doesn't give us a clear, a clear picture when you have a large number of teachers. So sometimes they're just not leaving. They're transferring to something else. Thank you. Senator Horner. Um, my question is, uh, I have two. The first would be, um, why um, is there a limit of five institutions uh, for this program as opposed to, I think, the original 15 or 20 or more? And, and can we be sure we're geographically dispersed with only five? Well, I think the goal here is to get the five best education preparation programs in the state. Um, would I like to see the program grow? Absolutely in the future. But one of the reasons why we have limited the number, and, uh, and we did this um, in consultation with our friends in the academic community, as I mentioned earlier, what limit, limiting it to five allows you to do is, first off, they're going to be choosing the five best ed prep programs in the state. But what it also allows you to do is that the funding is going to provide for somewhere between 150 and 160 teachers in the program. So they will be able to be dispersed between these five programs in cohorts. And if you're reading literature on education preparation and kind of understanding the best ways to educate teachers, the cohort model is something that's supported by academic research and so rather than dispersing the scholarship uh, recipients throughout the state of North Carolina we're keeping them concentrated in a programmatic way it also helps the programming side of the teaching fellows um, initiative in terms of um, when we went out and talked to Meredith so there are there are a few private institutions that still offer a teaching fellows program they they, they fund it with their own scholarships but they offer the program that's what teachers were really desiring it wasn't just the forgivable loan aspect of the of the uh, system it was the program that they went through the eliteness the special attention all of that and that is what we are trying to reestablish as something that is very distinguished and um, and that's why we've come to that we've arrived at that place follow up 
Um, the other question I had, and I really like the intent of this, I like the ability to expand later, but um, the, the forgiveness loan, it looks like it's it was plucked out of antiquity of, of a 10% rate. Could, could that not be considered to be low, lower to maybe a more reasonable market rate of five as a cap for the most interest rate you could charge these folks on the, the payment of that loan? Uh, 10 was was a relative figure in the old days, but uh, now it's sort of usury. Yes, sir. I hear some chatter back there. Hold, hold on one second. I think that the what's going on behind me is the question of whether or not it is um, consistent with the forgivable education loans for service program that the state also operates, um, which is somewhat similar. It's similar in, in certain ways. It's much more expansive in terms of who can apply for it. But I think that's how we arrived at that number. And I think we're just looking for somebody to confirm that. Stance, you have a comment? Ah, yes, Brett Altman, Fiscal Research Division. So it's based on the federal rate and it's set a little bit higher in order to sort of discourage students from using this simply as a way to get funding and then or not fulfill the service requirement. So that's why it's a little bit higher, but uh, potentially it, it could come down a little bit. Yeah. One, 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 one last, uh, that, that would be my suggestion. Please consider that. We, we don't want to be punitive. We're obviously statewide lowering rates ourselves on income tax and other things. And I think it makes sense to be as gentle as we can with these folks who made a wrong decision and get them teaching. That would be my my request. Well, I wouldn't say they made a wrong decision. Well, I mean, if they decide to pay it back and not do it. I understand. That's my point. Senator Smith Ingram. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Barefoot, I was looking at the criteria in terms of the selection of the five institutions at the bottom of page three and the top of page four. And I know that there is no specification as to geographical area. I um, just have a basic question. Um, is it probable that all five institutions will be located in one area and that will significantly impact some other institutions that could be selected if you look at geography as one of the criteria? In the consideration I think what we've attempted to do with this bill is create the most elite distinguished program possible and to do that it means to take the five best teaching pre preparation programs in the state you know whether public or private and this 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 Commission will get together and they will set that criteria and, and determine that and that's what I would argue we need to do at this point. Um, follow up. Okay, one, one follow up and one more question. So is there going to be any discussion about geography? Or are you going to defer that? Or can there be a um, recommendation or at least an analysis of geography in the selection process for the institutions? I would, I would hesitate against that. I mean, I would hesitate in, in, in trying to tell the commission what to do um, in terms of selecting these programs before they actually have a chance to do it. Um, and I, I'll just be honest with you, geography is not, is not I, that's not what we are placing our emphasis on. What we are placing our emphasis on is excellence. And I would, I would just respectfully ask that we continue to that's the mission that the commission has is to place their emphasis on excellence rather than other things and i think that's what will make this program excellent um, so to the extent that we deviate from that we, we put it at risk and um, and i would ask that we continue forward where we're at okay corrupt you would like to make a comment Senators, in drafting, if you look at the drafting on line 40, it does say including the following. It does not make it an exclusive list. So I think it could be interpreted that they can, amongst their discussion, have other things that they consider. But these things have to be included. Okay. Okay, one final question, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I really have no question but to make a couple of comments. Um, I think this program is very unique 
and is well needed in the state of North Carolina. And I commend uh, Lieutenant Governor Forrest and Senator Barefoot for their leadership on this. I think it's got two unique um, elements that we just don't see in state government. I mean, I really like the endowment ideas, uh, as Lieutenant Governor Forrest talked about. I think that takes it out of the budget provision and provides some long-term funding uh, for this program. And I hope we look at other kind of endowment provisions going forward. And I commend you, Lieutenant Governor, for not uh, rushing to identify a program so quickly. And then with Senator Barefoot's uh, program, I mean, as you've talked about, this has been very collaborative in working with all the necessary stakeholders. Um, I, it's empirically driven, and I would say, Senator Ingram, uh, Smith Ingram, that maybe as a startup concept, I think it might be best to leave, allow the commission to select the first five initial institutions, but certainly, I think going forward after they identify best practices, there might be the opportunity to build that out. I think it's important that we, we don't lose sight, and I'm sure the commission will do this, is when we produce these teachers, they will look to hopefully go to hard uh, to fill uh, schools around the state, particularly rural areas, to, to teach. Uh, you know, last thing I'll say, Mr. Chair, is that um, you know, for our state to be globally competitive, we know that we've got to focus on the uh, STEM areas: science, technology, engineering, and math. And you know, I, I think this combines the best of uh, repurposing and teaching fellows, and then uh, teaching the next generation of North Carolinians in the area that can make us globally competitive. And so I. Uh, is one of the reasons I was a co-sponsor of this bill, and I'm uh, very excited for what you've done, Senator Okay, Senator Davis, quickly, we have some public speakers. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, I, too, want to commend the bill, and the only question, and more so, I wanted to follow up on is, obviously, coming out of the last session, um, which, um, Senator Barefoot, you somewhat alluded to, um, NC Promise uh, with the $500 and $2,500 out of state tu tuition um, that was in enforced or implemented here at the General Assembly. My, my question is um, did we give consideration? I mean, obviously, you implied in your comments that they could be considered those three institutions, um, but with the unique nature of the way they, those were established and identified by a session. Um, has there been consideration given, again, to ensuring that NC Promise schools perhaps are considered, um, you know, in this effort here? Well, I, I think I know what you're asking, and to the extent that no schools have been considered on our part, what we have tried to do is set up a process by which we tell the commission these are the things we value, and right now what we value is getting forgivable loans to students to attend the best education preparation programs in the state of North Carolina. The reason why I brought up the issue of the NC Promise Schools, I don't know whether they'll be selected or not, but my point was um, to Senator Waddell that the way the bill works is we have authorized the SEAA to issue up to $8,250 for the forgivable loan. What I was trying to do is put in perspective for her that there, are, that there are a wide range of cost of programs out there. And even before we did NC Promise, you had you still had schools in the UNC system that are, are well below the $8,250 in the forgivable loan. So I was trying to provide some per perspective on, um, on how that amount of money is going to be helpful to these teachers. Okay, and just a follow up. One quick follow up, we really need to move on. I understand, Mr. Chair, and I'll make it a comment in lieu of a question then. Um, what I'm getting at too is if this General Assembly, or actually the last General Assembly technically, and many of us returned, um, made a commitment you know, to these schools in these areas for various reasons, it would just appear to you know, as we're moving forward, we will continue to at least take in consideration, you know, in the spirit of, you know, these outside, out, out, uh, other circumstances that we have considered as we move forward with another great program. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have five public speakers. I want to call on North Carolina State Superintendent Laura Johnson to speak. Are you okay? Uh, thank you. I, I just wanted. 
wanted to come over and uh, let you all know that my full support for this initiative. I think there have already been a lot of things mentioned on why this is so valuable. Um, I have the privilege and honor of representing the entire state, which means that I have been traveling the entire state from Forsyth to Rocky Mount to right here in Wake County, down to Mecklenburg, to the mountains, to the coast, uh, rural and urban. I can tell you there's a lot of excitement about this proposal. Um, teachers are really excited uh, to have teaching fellows and also to have it uh, so focused uh, on, on the focus that you're bringing. And uh, I, I really want to champion what you're saying about making it a prestigious program. It's not just the pay that teachers are looking for, it's also the career growth. And I think this is a step in the right direction. And I want everyone to know my full support is behind this. And thank you for all the hard work. Thank you. Now, Dr. Mary Ann Danowitz, Dean of the College of Education at NC State University. Thank you, Chair Curtis, uh, Senators Barefoot, Lee, and Ballard, the bill sponsors. As you know, and I think as the superintendent has just said, we know that one of the greatest and most urgent challenges facing North Carolina is the growing teacher shortage. We need more teachers, especially in STEM fields and in special education. We at NC State and the College of Education are doing all that we can to meet these needs. We are the state's largest supplier of STEM educators, and our graduates teach with that focus from kindergarten to the advanced placement courses in math in our high schools. We have one of the few elementary ed STEM focus programs in the country. And drawing on NC State's strengths in STEM, our program produces teacher leaders who have a deep content knowledge in every discipline related to STEM, with a special emphasis on STEM-focused instruction beginning at the elementary years. Our special education program is also taking a lead in preparing educators who work with our most vulnerable students. Just last month, we announced at NC State a graduate certificate in special education implementing multiple tier systems of support. Our new graduate certificate program will address a statewide mandate to make sure every student in North Carolina's public school system reaches their potential. I believe that the new Teaching Fellows Program will allow us to do even more to address the state's needs. This program will enable us to attract more high capable people who have a desire to teach in STEM fields and in special education. Beyond the need to provide excellent preparation programs for future STEM and special education teachers, we believe that administrative support for colleges participating in the Teacher Fellows Program can help target teaching fellows into areas of the state that face the highest teacher attrition rates and face the hardest recruitment challenges. At NC State, we have learned the value of co-curricular experiences that prepare students to engage with people different than themselves and that we can nurture them with a passion to work in low-performing schools. The Teaching Fellows Program can help us further motivate students to choose to work in schools with highest needs. This is an extremely important bill for North Carolina's future. Establishing this program will attract the passionate people we need to teach our students. And by bringing these passionate people back, we will continue to improve student success in the state and provide a skilled workforce especially a workforce that meets the demands of the STEM fields. So I thank you for the opportunity to be here today. And this is a bill that I could not say that the faculty and staff in most of our, if most if not all, our UNC public institutions believe is important for the future of the state. And we are all behind it. Thank you. Okay, uh, have three more speakers. Please uh, make fairly short comments. We need to get to another uh, issue before we adjourn. We'll call on Wingus Smith, former teaching fellow and special education math teacher in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County School. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, uh, committee members. Uh, I wouldn't be where I am today without the teaching fellow scholarship. Um, 
grew up with Senator Barefoot in Thomasville, thought about going into education, but would not have went into education without the Teaching Fellow Scholarship. Um, I'm a very proud graduate of UNC Chapel Hill, especially today. Um, but um, I went into the Teaching Fellows program as a history teacher. I taught for several years as a history teacher uh, in Wake County. And uh, one day I was approached, hey, we don't have enough special ed teachers. Would you consider switching? Um, and so if Wake County is in a teacher shortage, you know the rest of the state is. Um, and so I did switch. I'm now teaching special education math uh, at the high school level. And I could not imagine doing anything else. All right, so I please, uh, please encourage everyone in here uh, to, for the passage of this bill for the uh, benefit of our children and the benefit of our state's future. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Michael Marr, Assistant Dean for Professional Education and Accreditation at the College of Education at NC State University. Uh, I'd like to thank the committee for the for the time. Uh, I also am the vice president of the North Carolina Association of Colleges and Teacher Educators. So it's the professional association in North Carolina that represents the 51 teacher preparation programs. Um, so I'm, I'm also speaking on behalf of that organization, uh, teacher preparation in the state. I think you know it's no it's no secret that we we've, we've seen declining teacher preparation enrollments over the past few years. Teaching, as you know, is complex. Teacher education is complex. There are a lot of factors that contribute to the decline in teacher preparation. But I think it's it's no secret as well. Once you see the decline in teacher preparation, you see a decline in the number of teachers, and thus that exacerbates the problem we have of finding highly qualified, highly effective individuals. We had roughly 5,000 lateral entry teachers in the state of North Carolina last year. Um, of those, they are disproportionately represented in math, science, and special education. I think this bill does a couple of things that, that for me at least, are, are critical. One is that it addresses those particularly high-need subject areas, math, science, special education, and of targeting those. Additionally, the incentivizing uh, work, incentivizing the working in low-performing schools, also a critical need in North Carolina. So those two aspects, along with this idea of having um, uh, a smaller number of programs at the start, would allow, as Senator Barefoot said, to have cohorts of pro cohorts of students. Uh, with whom you can have these kind of ancillary programs to wrap around and truly make it a program experience rather than just a loan forgiveness or scholarship program. So again, I, I want to thank everyone for the, for the bill. I think folks uh, in teacher preparation are also very excited about the possibilities. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Dr. Hope Williams, is she here? Oh, there she is. President of North Carolina Independent Colleges and Universities. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. And thank you, Senator Barefoot, for introducing this bill. We have 31 independent colleges and universities with teacher education programs across the state. And we prepare almost 25% of the new teachers who graduate from colleges and universities in North Carolina each year. So this is an important program for us, in great part, too, because producing teachers for the state of North Carolina was one of the reasons many of our colleges and universities were first founded, and we maintain that commitment. There are, however, many challenges. As has been mentioned earlier, I won't focus on that, but in terms of recruiting teachers, our, our colleges and universities are finding it very difficult for a variety of reasons that would take longer than we have time to discuss today. But this program is one way to encourage terrific students to think about teaching. And the wonderful thing about this program is that it may encourage students who would not <coughs> otherwise consider teaching as a career to do so and having the scholarship piece of that can let them do that, knowing that they're going into a field where we've work, been working as a state to continue to increase the salaries, but then that's still an issue, certainly, and this would allow them to enter that without being worried about whether they can pay back their student loans. I think this also shows that uh, it is an indication to the public that teaching and educating teachers is a major priority for the state of North Carolina and that it would put an emphasis on this particular program. I can tell you that we had a number of colleges and universities in the Teaching Fellows program before and that word about this has spread like wildfire and I have already had a number of our campuses express interest in applying. So I'm delighted to commend this to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're going to table this bill for a vote.